make sure you subscribe to the Oliveboard channel and click the bell icon to never miss a video from Oliveboard. In this video, we are going to look at some tips and tricks for permutations and combinations. And this chapter is essential for any banking examination. So if you are a bank aspirant, make sure you keep watching. So firstly, let us see what is the difference between permutations and combinations. In case of permutations, the order, the order or the arrangement would matter. Okay, it matters how you place the objects or the subjects or the uh, parts, it matters a lot. However, in the case of a combination, as you all know, the order does not matter. Now, those two things are the fundamental concepts. So I'm pretty sure all the uh, bank aspirants who have studied this chapter even once will know about it, but it is easy to get confused. So make sure you know that permutations means it matters. If you know about permutations, then you can easily say that for combinations, the order does not matter. Okay. Moving on, we see that some of the different formula or should I say properties or truths, you could say facts about permutations and combinations. The first thing is the zero factorial. Now this sign, okay, which we know as exclamation in English is factorial in maths. So zero factorial is one. Okay. One factorial is of course one as we all know. And n factorial is, is equal to n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 all the way until we reach 1. And here is the example for 6 factorial. We have 6, okay, 6 into 6 minus 1 because 6 is your n, n is your uh, 6, okay. So 6 into 6 minus 1, n minus 1 into n minus 2 into n minus 3 into n minus 4 into n minus 5. Now, if you ask why did we stop here, that is because n minus s, s sorry, s minus, uh, 6 minus 6 is 0. Okay, but in this case, we stop at 1. So that is why we have 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 and that gives us 720. Also, one important thing that you must know is n factorial is only true if n is greater than or equal to 0. n factorial cannot exist if n is less than 0. So if you have let's say minus 5, okay, minus 5, now minus 5 factorial does not exist actually. Any number which is smaller than 0, absolute 0, means minus say minus 1 or you could say minus 2, even minus 0. Uh, 0 0.01 okay uh, there is no factorial as such for those numbers so you should at least have zero factorial which we know is one okay at least zero factorial below zero it does not exist so please keep this in mind so moving on when you are writing the examination it is necessary to be quick right you have to be fast so what do we advise you we advise or we recommend you that you you memorize the first 10 digits factorials like one factorial is one zero factorial is one as you already have seen one factorial is one two factorial is two up to four or even five it is fine but six onwards six seven okay seven eight 9 and finally 10. All of those cases you must memorize the factorials because if you have an, uh, a question in the exam which asks you for 9 factorial, okay, 9 factorial is what? If you start multiplying 9 into 8 into 7 into 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1, that is going to cost you a lot of time. So it is, it is better that you actually memorize this thing. If you can, very well and good. If not, 
no worries moving on let us see about permutations in some detail now as you know that permutations are arranged bins where anything can be taken and, and arranged in such a way that the or order of arrangement matters let me give an example if we take some alphabets and arrange them in various ways to create different words those have to be permutations right right because because we we will create words that make sense so how you arrange the alphabets de decides whether the word will make sense or not so in this case it is a permutation permutations are denoted by npr as you as you all know npr is nothing but the number of arrangements of n number of things considered at r at one instance of time so it's like saying that i have uh, 26 alphabets and i can arrange them in so let's say 10 ways as in how many you know how many how many permutations can i get okay always n is greater than r n is the number okay number of objects r is the number of ways and npr is equal to n factorial into n minus r the whole factorial okay so this is exactly what you should focus on and we will be looking at combinations now so similar to permutations combinations are also about arrangements but the order does not matter okay now one easy way for you to remember permutations as well as combinations is to understand that if you can remember only about permutations then you will not have to remember about combinations because if permutations we say the order matters in that me that case combinations the order does not matter right so in this case the arrangement can be in any way this does, does not have to make sense okay and for permutation for permutations we had npr for combinations we have ncr and in this case it is the number of combinations of n number of things taken as r at an instance as in at at one time at one point of time now ncr or it means that i can arrange n number of things in r number of ways in such a way that their arrangement does not make i mean you know it doesn't have to make sense the order does not have to make a, a difference okay so like for example you can take this uh, example of picking a number of uh, you know balls of various colors from bag and in this case it's really a combination because it doesn't matter whether you pick the green ball first or the red ball it, it hardly makes a difference right at the end of the day you're getting the colors anyway so how does it matter as in in this case at least it doesn't matter that they have to be one after another correct so that's uh, that's one example of combination and like like our uh, permutations we have the ncr the formula n n factorial divided by r into n minus r factorial this is something that you have to understand guys in the next slide we will see what is the relationship when we are looking at the formula of a permutation and a combination also n has to be greater than or equal to r it cannot be less than r either it should be equal to r or it should be greater than r but in case of permutations as you guys know n has to be greater than r okay so in the last slide here we shall see the we see the relationship between npr and ncr or like when we say the uh, relationship between a permutations and a combination it is nothing but this one if you compare the formula for ncr and the, and the formula for npr the only difference is one missing r factorial that npr has but ncr doesn't have okay so that is the main thing if someone gives you now why is this relationship very important it is important because you have to understand how uh, is a combination and how is a permutation uh, related to each other for the same case okay if they have given you a permutation how are, how, how are you going to convert it to, into a combination or if they have given you a combination how are you how are you making uh, going to convert it into a permutation so all of these things are very very important and that you should definitely uh, keep in mind 
Moving on, we have some important formulae for uh, permutations and combinations. All those things, they may or may not make sense to you right now. But if you can memorize the, the formulas and if you start practicing them, then definitely you will benefit from the same. Okay, so there's not much to really discuss here. It's more of, uh, you know, applying the formula in each case and getting the correct answer. But you must remember the fundamental concept about what is a permutation and what is a combination. So that's all guys for, for permutations and combinations. Make sure to like and share this video with your friends so they too can benefit from the same. And keep working hard and success will be yours. Thank you so much.